Well, my dad's not around to guard his garage, so I went ahead and put a boat in it. Now this one's a little smaller, a little more room to maneuver, a lot more. So that's good. Plan for today is to build a small bimini top for this little boat. So, to begin with my skin cancer avoidance device, needed some pipe, picked it up. It was 19 bucks for each stick. Probably could have got one, but got two. I probably need two, but. Picked up some Bimini hardware on eBay. Low, low price of 11 bucks. Now for $11, you figure to be pretty cheap and you know, not very good quality. It actually really is some pretty well-built little uh, plastic here. Like it's, it's quite strong. I was expecting quite flimsy. I was surprised. Uh, we'll need some more audit ends, some little cleats, some little straps, some canvas, but it's a start. Now, you could be saying to yourself, hey, why don't you just buy a Bimini top? You can get them on eBay for 80 bucks. Well, my friend, not this small. This thing is tiny. All right, I've enlisted the help of the father since he's old and retired and knows how to measure. Uh, here is our main tool for this, a pipe bender. I don't know if it'll actually bend the aluminum without breaking it. If it doesn't, then this is the end of this video. How high do you want the bend to be? I don't know, we're gonna figure that out right now. So, we're going to go up three feet to the top of the bimini. All right, what he's leaving out is why it's three feet tall. The plan is to use these, this is kind of a center point, so we're three feet back and it won't hit my little light when it's down and folded up. So that's the reason for the three feet tall. Could go a little taller, but three feet works. He's good in here for at least 20 minutes exploring the trailer and the boat and the wheels and the lights. Actually, and... actually, the trailer is also a boat. And then there's the boat sitting on the boat. Oh, I keep correcting <laughs> him. I keep telling him that that's a trailer. And then he corrects you back. Boat. No, trailer. Boat. Okay. Trailer. So Boat. Three feet less five inches. So we'll come up two feet seven inches. And that's where the bend starts? That's where the bend starts. Pick that bad boy up and just find the mark. Okay. Is that a mark? No, it's back here. Oh. There it is. <laughs> what are you doing, Ed? You need one. I think. Oh, yeah, that's some strong pipe. Okay, then why don't you get the longer pipe? Yeah, I got a kind of eight footer here. Or a six footer. I think this is why I want a thin wall. You need that thin wall? No. Oh, that's why it's so hard. <laughs> what did you steal? <laughs> now, you may be thinking, oh, you sissy, it's a pipe, just bend it. Well, it's a pretty thick wall. It's a eighth inch, or actually, when we measured it, nine sixty fours. So it's a, some pretty stout pipe. Fun, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you gotta, I gotta put it in this way. Yeah. Well, that, that, so should I, so you, what you do is line you to that? Yeah, exactly. There, I'm lying. This is gonna be fun. Now, you've got to be vertical with that, so stand up and line it up. There you go, right? Yep, you're too far. Back a little bit. Right there. Ready? Yeah. Now keep it vertical when you go. First one is done. This is the main bend. Now we're going to work on the second bend, which is the little or halfway one. We'll go here. Alright. We need more pulls. Alright, so rather than busting out the trigonometry calculator, 
We're just uh, putting the yellow pipes together, marking where our other mark was where we bent, and we'll bend it there, and they'll be identical. We hope. We hope. All right, next one is marked. We're going to grab our pipe bender and bend it. Okay, so we're going to go, let's call it four and three eighths. Right? Yeah. Say when. Keep going. A little more. Right about there, should do it. That's it. That's it. Yep. All right, I made a mark at 27 inches up, right here. That's about where I want the. Uh... I don't remember what it's called. The strap, little attachment to go. So, gonna use my drill bit guide to go onto the pipe. Make sure I can keep the hole decently straight and where I want it. There now. All right, now we are at the sewing machine. I have marked about where I think I want this. So we're going to go ahead and start sewing. So for the middle support, for the middle bar, we're going to go halfway between the base and the top and see how it looks. And I have uh, 30 inches of straight, uh, so 15 inches is where it goes, and 15 inches is right there. All right, well, you want to play with the wheel? This is my fabric. I have it flipped upside down, laying on the garage floor. I was looking around at pictures of Bimini tops so I could see how they made them. It looks like the middle bar isn't much support other than a little strip of cloth inside that the middle bar runs to. So I'm going to attach that down first, sew it down and everything, put it on the boat and then start stretching and fine tuning where I want everything else. Um, the material is 60, I forget what, 61 inches wide, so I centered it that way so it's nice and in the center, measured the usable material I have up here, so it's 31 inches there and 31 inches back here, and I'll trim as needed. So the first plan is to run two stitches along the bottom side and then along the top here, leaving the ends open for the pipe to run through. Now, I don't know how I'm going to do this because I have a tiny little sewing machine. I'll figure that out in a second. But I want this to stay here, and I was thinking about taping it down, and I don't think it's going to stick very well to the material. So I think I'm just going to put some super glue down there and hope it stays. All right, let's see how well this goes. All right, fifth time's a try. All right, 
right, here goes now. All right, I got some tape holding in my fold for my edge seam. Let's hope that works. You do this on both sides. I remember in the early 2000s, I went to the boat shop to try to buy a bimmy top for my little boat. And the uh, boat shop guy, he was like, oh man, those things are pretty expensive. He knew I was poor. But had a boat for some reason. Anyway, he's like, yeah, top's like four or five hundred bucks. I was like, well, what's cost on that top? He's like, well, let's, <laughs> let's not get carried away. So they, the, the upcharge of them on the boat shop was just phenomenal for years. I'm sure people were way overpaying for these stupid bimini's. And now you can get it for a hundred bucks without any issues. If you're watching this video, debating doing your own, a hundred bucks really isn't that bad. Just buy one. Unless you need some stupid small size. Then, I don't know, buy one, make your own modifications to it. <laughs> make it fit. I don't know. But back to fighting with this thing. All right, the back is sewn up. As you can see, I got a little bit of a fold. That could be because of my strap going around here. But I think I can also get a lot of the wrinkles out of it. I didn't show you anything with the back because I didn't know what I was doing. I just went for it, see where I landed. But we still got the front to do, so that's what I'm gonna show you. But yeah, Bimini top making ain't fun. So I commandeered some chalk from the uh, the mother, I'd say the baby, but he doesn't care at all about the chalk. He just wants to throw little balls around. So what I did was mark the line where the pole, or where I want the pole, on my top. All right, so there's a line all the way around it now. So when I sew it, I know kind of where I want it to be. Now the problem with this top design, the only way to get the fabric on and off is to disassemble the whole thing. So putting it on and off to make it is kind of a nightmare, but that's kind of what you expect, I guess, when you're making something on your own. I suppose a smart man would have made cuts here and used some kind of way to join these together mm -hmm. to avoid that problem. Obviously, that's not me. All right, so this is what I devised to sew this up. Got it on the ground, obviously. I got a pipe. Fold it over, and I can see where the pipe is supposed to be. And I screwed up once already doing this. So you don't want to go too tight with the pole, because you're never going to pull in if you do. But you don't obviously want to be too loose. So I'm going to throw some glue down where I got to sew just to keep everything in order. Now, the back of the material, I can glue to for some reason, but I can't to the front. So whatever kind of back this is, allows glue. All right, so now the position will be held. I'll probably start right there, on my seam. Where the finger's width. I'll go through, mark a couple of finger widths, just make sure I kind of keep on track. All right, that's what I'm sewing first. This should go pretty smoothly. You never know. Yeah, I find where I put the super glue. 
So I have the middle pipe, the little one. It's the easiest to manage. Inside of the top, sitting where our seam was. So I'm gonna eyeball about where it goes. Luckily, that's where our chalk line comes in handy, as I can see the angle it's supposed to be on. So it looks like we're about there. So that is where it goes. I'm going to glue the edges where my fingers are. Hold it together for me. Here comes first lift. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. New straps are coming tomorrow. I broke down and bought some. For the most part, that looks pretty decent, I'd say. I like the color. It kind of matches the little red accents of the boat. I have an issue with my flag, but that's a different story. But that, that looks like a decent top, I'd say. It fits the size of the boat. It's not, it's not too big, it's not too overpowering. It looks like it, it fits this boat. Well, the top is on and reinstalled now. So all I'm doing is uh, kind of trimming the straps. Kind of debating if I want to leave them long or short or how I want to do it. I leave them long, use them for something else later, but at the same time, then I have a So you can either sew it or just heat it up with a lighter. I'll trim the rest in. That's pretty much it. Alright, let's slap an engine on here, make sure we have no problems with the top via the outboard. Alright, that board is on there. Naturally no problems there. Didn't expect any. Make this front strap off a little bit. The rear, let's see that. Pretty, uh, pretty close. I don't think it's actually hitting the outboard at all. Nope, it's hit, hitting the uh, cable that's holding it up a bit. See right here? So to get in, in and out of the boat, you step into the back corner. You can still do that. There's still room there, you just got to step that much higher now. Not the end of the world. And then of course, once you're in the boat and situated, you grab your strap, probably the one on that side, pull it up, strap it down, and you're good to go. Take seconds. And then naturally you approach shore, go to get out. Now the back pull, It'll go, but it almost seems like if you give it a little bit of help, it, it'll fold, kind of fold and follow its natural curve a little better. So, end result, is it perfect? No, but it works. It works great. It fits the size of the boat. It's not too tall, it's not too wide, it's not overpowering, it's all around a good fit. Now granted, I probably didn't need the third middle support pole, but I was trying to go for a mini bimini top on my mini boat. So I wanted a full size looking top, only tiny. The stitching, yeah, it, it looks good from afar. So if I'm tooting down the river, it'll look like a good top. Close up, it looks like I stitched it with a pipe wrench. But you know, most people when they uh, take up sewing, you know, their first couple of projects, their pillows and then maybe a, 
a little stuffed animal, never a canvas top. This is my second sewing project and a canvas top. That's, that's a pretty good leap there. And of course the experience kind of shows because the stitching, well, let's not show too much of it. Now the frame of the boat, I absolutely think I did a fantastic job with it. It is strong, it is sturdy, it looks like a factory made pole. If you walk up to this thing and look at it, the top you're like, okay, somebody cheaped out on that thing. But when you look at the base, you're like, oh, this is a, this is a, you know, manufactured bimini frame. It's not made in my garage, but the bends are all equal. I even have this little guy all around. It's, it's really a good looking frame. But it's strong, it's not flimsy feeling. The reason I got the thick wall material is because that's all the metal shop had. They said they had some thin wall, and called me and said, no, this is the thinnest we can get. Eh, whatever, give it to me, I'll, I'll work with it. And you know what, I'm glad I did, because I have a neat way here to mount down my bimini straps. After I was done with this, I was thinking, you know, that should have been on the inside here. That way the loop of the strap would have held the, bit, held the pole. And all this strap would have done was hold it in its spot. So the stress wouldn't be on the screws slash, I don't know, clevis, whatever you want to call it here. It would be on the pole. Probably a stronger design. And I could have done that front and back. So when the time comes to replace the top, I'm probably going to flip the poles around so that I, I have that. But I'm not going to go drill new holes to change that now. It's too late. But if you're going to make one, you might want to consider doing that. Putting this on this side. Uh, commandeering the old straps off an old bimini was a good idea in theory. The problem is I didn't have any of these little uh, hooks that went on the bottom. So I had to buy some straps off Amazon. Uh, I'm glad I did. I wanted to get them at Walmart just because it was quick and easy, but I was looking at them and I really didn't want the, uh, the white. The, to me, those white straps, they still kind of look cheap. And now that I have these black ones, now I didn't actually feel the white ones, but they look cheap. These black ones do not look cheap. They feel strong. It's a good, well-made kind of a, a strap there. And it's, a, you know, I don't know if it's stainless, but it's stainless looking uh, hardware with, you know, a good feeling quality strap for the same price. So I'm glad I went with the uh, Amazon option. And one uh, other interesting thing that I wasn't really thinking about when I started this was these poles give me a lot of uh, options to clamp stuff to them. So I have my GoPro mount connected to a bunch of accessories, connected to my cell phone holder, which is what I use to film everything. And I can use that to clamp right onto the boat and position my phone wherever I may want it. So I think that's going to be better than the uh, tripod balancing in the boat. Because, you know, this is obviously not going to fall over. And if it does, it's going in the water and you're never going to see the footage anyway, so it's all good. Also, a little, a little slot right here. That's where I plan on slipping the registration, maybe with a little uh, snap button right here or something. That way it's on the boat, should I ever need it. And should I ever find it. Anyway, uh, also one more notable thing. Uh, taking this on and off so many times, um, I stripped out the set screw that goes here. Usually that might be a problem, but my tubing is so thick I was able to tap a hole put another bolt in there and that's probably better than the set screw anyway uh, if any more strap out I'll do that to them or I'll do the same thing and I, like I said I don't see any issue with it and it seems fine but notable all right let's go slap this thing in the water Find just floating along.
So they stopped, asked if I was okay. I mean, the engine was running. Couldn't have been that bad, but still a nice trip to stop. Let's see if we can race it. Catch up. That's the end of my video. There's a uh, company on YouTube. It's the boat. That is a boat. There's another YouTube video about making a bimini top by a company called Sailrite. They do an absolute fantastic job. Now the materials and uh, equipment they use, I could probably just buy... No. Mine. <laughs> Mine? <laughs> Now the materials and equipment they used, the cost of that is substantial. Mine was minimal. And the results kind of show that. But for the most part it's not. It's not too bad. But this was this was my attempt. Also I strapped down a little milk crate. A little loose, but it holds in there quite well. That, that turned out to be pretty handy. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed this video. Questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, let me know.